How you doing? This is Don, Kingdom 592, and we are still doing some testing. Lots of lots of testing. Okay, so I did a little preview video before this one, and then I dropped the artillery meat shield after the video because it just was a lot of work that I got it done. Okay, so here's the artillery meat shield. Uh, the artillery meat shield is dynamic, okay, where we before turned around and said, well, go build X number of troops. <laughs> Excuse me. Go build X number of troops. We're basing it off your march capacity because it's a linear curve. Eh, not that steep. As your castle size grows, your march capacity grows, as your gear grows, your stuff grows. Okay, uh, that stuff tends to be relative to where you are in the game. So when you're down here at castle level one, you're not going to have to build 100,000 artillery uh, to compete against other castle level ones. You know you're still shielded at this point, right? So the uh, you're going to be down to like a 40,000 march cap. And this is going to be, you know, versus, it's going to be a fraction thereof. Now, we've got the base health of the artillery put in there. And this is one of these things where it's in the game, but people don't know how to find it. They don't know how to see it. They don't understand that there's a base number there. Uh, we talk about base numbers, and we talk about base numbers uh, with the other troops as relative to guards. So we've included it in these tables because while on the artillery, there is a wall guard that does help with artillery now. Now, the reason we're doing it, we did artillery first, and we were rolling up, including me, we were rolling up our top two tiers because it just didn't matter. Uh, they screwed up the game so bad last year, and where they really screwed up, and we, we pointed out in video, uh, what, two months ago, that because they went to this single-tier march system, they basically took the four buildings in your thing and made only one of them relative. relative. They made it so that you went from a 200,000 march cap to a 700,000 march cap, you can only build troops one-fourth as fast because you're only using one troop building. And so it was this monster number of speed-ups they're selling. Oh, well, gosh, we're just going to sell the hell out of speed-ups. Reality is people don't have more money just because you want more money. You can run around all day long saying, well, I work at McDonald's and I've decided I want more. I want to make 15 bucks an hour. And everybody goes, well, I do don't have to eat at McDonald's because I'm not paying $27,000 for a cheeseburger because you can't get my order quickly. No, I will not pull to the next window, please. There's no one behind me, and you make cheeseburgers. That's what I ordered. When I was 14, it took 29 seconds on a grill. How come your microwave can't do it quickly enough? I'm not pulling forward. I'm going to sit right here. Get me my cheeseburgers, bitch. All right. So here we are, we're dealing with people who went and made changes, they didn't know what they changed, why they changed, or what they did. So we got some modified health usage here, I've got your castle level, now at some point, I, since I can pull, I'm pulling up these castle levels dynamically, I will truncate this table dynamically at some point, that's a display issue, uh, I haven't got into dynamic display in other words when you're only castle level 30 in your profile i'm only going to show you up to that point that way you don't get overwhelmed with numbers okay uh then over here the damage absorption capacity these are big stinking numbers now on artillery because artillery is not directly modified by your guard then there is no massive modification of artillery uh it's approximately eight percent of the damage is what they absorb and some of these tiers 
do not die. Okay. You're, I mean, they, 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 you're going to get some T3s and T4s that are going to kill some T12s. Not many. Like I said, it's point. It's it's about eight percent of total. So you got to build these artillery back up again, and that's why we did it first because a lot of us are back there, including me, guys. I had to do it too. I went out there and clickety clickety clickety, uh, just absolutely took a bunch. Now the damage absorption is a multiplier of both the base health and the total that you built. That you're being told to build and how much that tier is going to absorb in damage overall not really so much a relevant relevant number at the point that uh you're looking at this table but it is a relevant number when we start doing some can i win this fight math a little bit down the road because your total overall health so uh I'm pulling this math in now just to show that I can display it. And then we start talking about uh, attack marches. There's going to be some overall health that we bring to the attack. Uh, and that's where we're going to be able to turn around and say, if the guy has more than 3 million troops and you're only bringing 700,000, uh, are you going to kill all 3 million troops or are you over your head even attempting that attack? We're going to have some plug and play numbers in there. Uh, the uh, There's a point where you break, you know, just th that math hasn't changed. There's a point where you just break over and you start killing a lot of stuff. That's going to depend on your overall damage, your damage stats. You put the numbers in there. And uh, if you know because of a previous hit or somebody shared a report, you'll be able to go in there. Plug it into the into this future calculator and say his troop health is such. He's running distance marches. He's running these guards. He's running this this stuff, and this is what we got. How much would it take to break him down? Okay, that's a gonna castle hit hit, and then later on we're gonna get into can this rally beat that rally? Woo! That's gonna be we got to build the pieces before we, before we solve the puzzle. You know? Okay, so. We're starting with the meat shield because the meat shield demonstrates what kind of damage can we take. Each one of these troops has health. Damage eradicates health. Artillery doesn't have much of a modifier. So it's sitting there, you know, we're, um, I, I've got a pretty good artillery health number, not a great one, but, you know, I'm, I'm 1,258 and combining with my troop health. Okay, so comments in the site are, as a matter of fact, uh, uh, Watson49 or something like that asks, is like, well, I got told it's a divisible number, and does it divide equally, or is it a percentage? Who says it's a divisible number? Uh, look, at the end of the day, there's an equal sign in math. If I divide from one side, I have to divide from the other. It has to equal. If I leave them as a whole, I have to leave it as a whole on another. If I multiply it times four on one side, it's got to be multiplied four on the other. It's always got to be equal. What I display here is my version of the math. There's a dozen ways, hell, there's probably more than that, that you could come up with the same answer. Can this guy beat this guy? This is my method. Uh, the... The numbers that I'm displaying here, what does it matter? This is the number of troops you got. This is the number here. And you can start to see where, uh, like, Tier 4s can absorb more damage than Tier 3s at a much lower total artillery rate. Okay? And you can see also where I've, I've, got, I've got some of these things, like my Tier 6s, are a lower build number but my tier sixes actually apply more damage back the uh and so therefore you don't need as big of a number for them to effectively kill more troops and again it comes out to a percentage and we've done this against tier sixes against t12s we've been doing this for about two months now uh we 
you know, uh, one of the previous videos, the Batman in one of the UACs let us sit there and hit him over and over and over, both uh, individually and with rallies, uh, very troop amounts, so that we could get down to some approximated percentages. Now that we have this math out here for all you guys to see, there's a bunch of people going to be breaking this down and going, man, your tier 12s aren't right. Okay, go to the forums, show me why my math isn't right, and now I can go back and just change a couple numbers, and it'll be right for everybody. Uh, so now the community has some input in modifying the math. But we have to have something to talk about before we start talking about whether I'm right or wrong or don't know what. Because if we let the trolls run this stuff, then all we got is, you don't know shit. Nobody gives a damn what you think. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know. But we've got the second version of it up. So we start with artillery. So if you're a brand new castle, man, all the old farts are telling you, avoid artillery, avoid artillery, avoid artillery. Don't send artillery in our Red Guard camps. Stop listening to them. Artillery is part of the formation now. I haven't gotten up into the formation math because I'm still, I have to end, hand input every single piece of base data into the website for each one of these troop tiers. Then I can get into the multiplication math of what we're doing there. So, uh, get working on your, I mean, there, there's a lot of clicking here to do, and you're not going to want to buy it all with speed ups. But when you're sitting there idling and you got to do your dailies, right? Well, I need to build distance every day. What a great time to knock out, to crank out. I was like, well, you know what? I got so many camps, I could crank out some T6s overnight. Hey, I'm going to be on for the next three hours. I'm going to crank out some T2s for a little bit. Okay. Use your head a little bit. Uh, and, and you should be using speed ups every day. If you're hoarding your speed ups until the, uh, you know, the Thursday event. Usually we wait until after the Kingdom's Arms race. Because we get a 30% buff or better. And then... Uh, after you win or lose your KVKs the following day, you will have a 300% buff immediately on top of the 30% buff, which means you use fewer speed-ups. Okay, so that's going to give you your max max bang for the buck on speed-ups. So that, that if you want to start planning what day you do massive builds, but every day you should log in and be speeding up you know, you should have more than 24 hours worth of stuff that cooked overnight. You should speed cook them off. It finishes your dailies. And uh, these are the numbers you're going to have to come look at. Now, these are both uh, on the free and the silver side, okay? And I'm going to have... I honestly could... I, 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 I cranked out the distance. It took me 19 days to build the artillery meat shield. Uh, it only took me about nine hours to build the distance meat shield because I got a whole bunch of the base coding done and it was just about changing some of the core math and then applying the formulas that I was using that I already had out in an, express, in an Excel spreadsheet so that you can do them and then making it relevant so that your numbers work up there. So I've I got a button up in here that says update your stats, right? You can go in there. Uh, March capacity. I got the question. It's like, uh, is our base March capacity? I don't want to put it. I don't want to put a voice to it. Sorry. It was, it was an honest question. Uh, March capacity with me will always be bring what you're slinging. Whatever you can send at somebody to try and kill them. That's your March capacity. That's everything you got. Your buffs, your gear, everything. You should know it should be set. It should be set in your formation bar. Okay. Uh, I'm going to take a little pause between the the meat shield is probably one of the more difficult calculators that I've ever put uh, that I've ever put together uh, in this dynamic format. I'm going to make an attempt to make a dynamic attack calculator with guards. Because honestly, in the back of my mind, now that I got some of this base math done, I think I can actually build one or two of those. 
and what we're going to have is a whole bunch of formations. Uh, I'm going to show you your two guards. I'm going to show you your guard buffs. I'm going to show you the increase to your base stats. Remember, we're just showing you that over there. Right? So I can I can apply a... Oh, I don't have to do that there. Well, I can do that here. It doesn't matter which. Uh, I can apply uh, a modifier to your base stats, i.e. a guard, and then turn around. So the guard that we're showing you is going to modify different troops differently because we may we uh, we're going to start mixing some cavalry guards and infantry guards and things like that uh especially when we start getting into war book manipulation uh i have found that most non uber coiners do not have enough war books uh and now there's some more damage math in the latest patch down there in the research center you're gonna have to start doing that and so the bring what you're slinging on the march capacity and then we're going to th turn around and uh, add some damage capability and then once we get done with the damage capability on an attack side we'll tell you could I beat 312,000 you know so there's there's 26,000 tier 13s could I beat that with my march you know and it's something that actually we can start testing this in game. Well, I'm just going to go out and put uh, 26,000 or 28,000 T13s out there, and because I don't care about my artillery. And then can a T6 cavalry beat them? Or can T6 infantry beat them? You know, can they kill those things? Uh, and then we'll know some variations on damage uh, based on player stats and things like that. So we'll get some good what if. I mean, there, there's going to be... Everybody kept asking for, can you give us all your base math and we'll come help you with the calculator? No, not giving you all my base math. Uh, but you can see where utilizing the numbers that I'm pr providing out to you means that you can do test hits in micros so that we can take that and apply it to the... 495 calculations that we're doing on this table alone the uh there's man it's just 13 rows right that's all it is 495 calculations to make that happen uh very proud of it but i got three digits that i can modify in there for some damage uh, and we can apply more damage numbers to them later, like versus math. Artillery is never going to have dirt versus math, but the distance table is, right? One one troop type kills the other one better, but we don't know what that. They just say it does. They don't know what the number is. So as you guys can see, when I was talking about the, why well, can I take this many of them out there? What can kill that many, and at what level can they kill them? We'll know, and if you do it with some T6s and then you do it with some T9s and your stats haven't changed, the only thing that changed was the damage number and the health number of the troop attacking, right? So how well they live. Uh, your attack number is not going to change. Only the damage number and the uh, health number are going to be different between the tier. Your, well, your the attack of the base attack is going to change. But we can extrapolate those three numbers based on enough hits and quite frankly based on where we pick a troop versus what kind of troop we'll be able to break down these we'll we'll get this damn near to accurate uh but this is the next level of testing uh when so i'm going to put together i've got three main marches that i've been building guys i play every day I hit my, I burn my stamina up two, three times a day. Uh, I still don't have three independently good marches. Okay. If I'd have kept my old C40 back in 362, I would have all this stuff, but I gave it away. Uh, the, you know, the C40, and, and the reason I gave it away was it got everything for free. If you're prior to Kingdom 570, you got all your stuff given to you for free. You got a way huge uh, uh, advantage. And when we get into the distance versus math, 
we're going to have to bring airship into the calculation because airship has both the PVE damage, that number that is completely different than the airship, than the player versus player damage number. And when you start to see things like, well, the player versus player, the, the damage number is 27,000 damage. All of a sudden, these great big numbers start to make sense, right? Uh, you know, we're applying 27,000 more damage with the airship. And my airship got X number of kills. Uh, have no clue how it generates that math. My airship only gets like eight, 900 kills at a time. Who knows? Uh, but the silver, the dollar ninety-nine, definitely you're going to have to have that in order to, you've got to have that. I've got the old KOA calculators, all the calculators you guys cried that I took off the thing because they weren't relative to guns of glory anymore. But I got a ton of the Kings of Avalon guys who's like, man, I need the calculator back because we use them over there. I didn't know. I don't play Kings of Avalon. I didn't know. They didn't do the guard update that Guns of Glory did. And so their stuff's still operating on old math. The nice thing for you Kings of Avalon guys, you know, uh, don't have the money to invest in it now. But I will be able to take some base math and I will find me somebody that will do some Kings of Avalon stuff. And I will create these dynamic tables for the Kings of Avalon guys down the road. It depends on how many paid users we have. Uh, the number, the math's got to work out, right? This is a business. We, it's not a charity uh, The uh, in the fact that we don't just turn around and take money and throw it out the door just to give things away for free. We generate money coming in so that I can turn around and give money away the way I want to give money away, right? The uh, it's a it's that kind of charity. It's not a charity to you. It's a charity to me. It's what I do with the money. Uh, but I appreciate it. The signups under the new system. I'm not completely happy with this menu breakdown where it spawns out because I know it doesn't work well on a phone yet. But with the new menu system, I can change the way the mobile works differently than the website. The website's still the way to go because it's what I look at every day. The display spawn out function uh, for a phone. When I get the time and my brain ain't warped, I will go through my phone and I will try to navigate my own website and go, well, that sucks. Uh, down at the bottom is a whole bunch of stuff that's more phone friendly. So if you're watching this on a phone or things like that, some of the stuff is down there. See, like there's the distance meet shield down at the bottom. Yada, yada, yada. Right. Uh, so look for that down there for quicker navigation. Uh, that, that one is supposed to be a little more mobile friendly. And then I will make the in site more mobile friendly. And, oh, you know what? I've got to add, I'll add the, uh, the distance meet shield to the drop down menu up at the top. Uh, you guys don't see this on a mobile. It's three lines. It's a black bar with three lines uh, to expand that down. And then I played with that on my phone. That sucks. I hate it. I don't know why anybody would use mobile. But we've moved from 50. <coughs> we moved from 52% of our viewers uh, being mobile to 61, 62% are mobile. Uh, people are just more comfortable on their mobile devices. And the uh, with the deck system, you see right there. I've got this hooked up to my computer. I just literally hook my Samsung via cable right to my computer windows 10 i install the samsung decks and then i play the game uh right there on the computer it's much faster and so when i set down the phone on my desk where it makes a loud noise when somebody's attacking me before the red light comes on the phone vibrates so i get a half a second delay to go in and try and uh, stop from somebody, but that march is already sent time-wise. The game needs to have 
whatever delay they've got between one touch input and the responsive capability input has closed up to be too tight. Uh, guys who are using computers with no graphical interface. And if you want to know who those guys are, okay, so I'm very anti-cheater. You see these people putting out one troop for you to hit, and they'll even stick them right next to your castle. That's so that they can get certain numbers from the stat report. And then the software on their computer will determine whether or not uh, determine what how much they need to speed up or if they should even be involved, whether or not to let you hit or whether or not you can, they can beat. It's doing what we're doing on the website a little more roughly than we're doing it. Uh, but that's if you see those guys setting one or two troops out for you to hit in a camp next to your castle, don't give them the math. It and then there's a. Uh, I haven't written the article yet, but in the last artillery video, I showed some stat reports of guys I let hit where I lost. They were doing that. And then as soon as I saw what they needed, I instantly knew what I needed to do to adjust. In the next three hits, I took uh, I took their 400,000 marches right away from them. Uh, so we had three people in one alliance, uh, Kristoff, uh, Little Hunter, and of course, Lost King does it, but Lost King didn't didn't let his march go over there because he saw everybody losing theirs. And then, uh, oh, what's his name, Bicus. I know those four guys are using the script modifiers. The uh, all of them had to have their own one troop outside my castle. Uh, they they couldn't even just share the information that you know back and forth because they can't talk in game without Guns of Glory knowing that they're sharing very particular information that goes to scripting. The, uh, but I'll call the little lion thieves out for the lion thieves that they are. Uh, and it, it is what it is. The, uh, they can be beat. Guns of Glory needs to adjust the delay for the touch input between somebody sends an attack and how much time I have to respond to after the red light comes on because for me to open my bags and teleport and or bubble takes a second and a half if I'm on the ready and if Guns of Glory hasn't moved all my icons around why I can't you know the uh, there should be an icon to where I can drag something onto my quick bar out of my bags let me try one or two items out of my bags, put it on a bar, and so I could bubble. You know, let me bubble. Damn. Uh, I, I've seen these guys that were sending, I mean, since it takes a second and a half to open up all the menus to send an attack, when someone sends five attacks in under a second, they weren't using a human device. That's all there is to it. The uh, it's not humanly possible if I stand over the phone and go and go like that. And I've ranked seventh in pistol shooting. My little, my little fingers fast, folks. The uh, it's good for gaming, good for real world shooting. The uh, I've beaten some world competitions on that stuff. So, uh, world class competitors. At that stuff is what I meant to say. The uh, so in both gaming and shooting, the so the distance meet shields up. You're gonna have to have a silver membership, the dollar ninety nine a month for the march stuff. I'm gonna get the two guards. I'm gonna modify the march. I'm gonna have the tiers set up to what I'm using right now. And then uh, the uh, we'll start giving you a, a graphical display, and the marches will adjust as your march cap goes up and your stats go up and things like that. There will be some adjustment. The uh, so the, uh, look forward to that. I hope to have some of that done before next Friday, uh, at least. Uh, I'm going to try and get some of it done tonight, depending on it on my eyes. Or I'm looking at the film going, whew. The, uh, it's early, though. 
long day. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you.